Hello, and welcome to worship at Gethsemane Lutheran Church in Houston, Texas. I'm Pastor Jerry McNamara, and on behalf of our entire church family, I welcome you to this service for March 31st, or whenever you see it, I welcome you in the name of Jesus, our Savior, our friend, and our gift of peace. We're certainly praying for you to have peace at this time when there's been so much trouble, so much uncertainty in the world. In fact, when I came up here today to record the service, I was surprised to find my sermon notes in the pulpit from March 15th, the last Sunday that we had services here. It was a little bit of a lump in my throat and uh, sadness of how much time has gone by, how much has uh, been thrown into chaos, and how much still remains under question. But there is one thing I hope we are clear about. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, is still with us. God is still for us. And nothing is impossible with God. And I truly mean, believe that means we are going to make it through this time. In fact, we are so very excited that we will be welcoming anyone to services at Gethsemane in just one week on June the 7th. Hope that you might be a part of that. We want to make sure that you get all the information, all the precautions that we're taking without taking up a great deal of time here in the service. So here is what we would encourage you to do. Send an email to jerry at youmattertogod.com We'll make sure you're on our e-newsletter and that you get all of that information. Also, you can use that same email address if you want to request this large print version of our service that we're preparing. We make it available on our website for anybody to download, but if you'd like it mailed to your home because email is not your thing, then get someone, a friend, to send you an, e send an email to that same address, Jerry at youmattertogod.com. Include your full name and address. We'll get this mailed out to you each week. Even though some of you may not be able to join us for any reason, we're going to continue to do our live streaming service, our uh, posting up on Facebook and YouTube, and we hope that you will access our services that way. Even the audio, just any way we can, we're trying to share God's encouraging word with you. Okay? Well, with that in mind, I would like to begin today's service with you and call upon God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and seek His blessing. Amen. Lord God, we come before you, the three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God who is our Maker, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer and Comforter. Please, now, Lord, be glorified in this time that we, your people, we, your children, share our love for you in our songs and prayers, and open our ears and our heart to you as we listen to your word brought to us. Lord, these things we pray in faith, in the name of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now, please join me together as we sing our opening hymn, which I forgot to mention up until this point, today's Pentecost Sunday, a Sunday when Christians for centuries have celebrated a promise Jesus made and a promise that was kept 40 days later. Jesus asked his church, wait in Jerusalem for 40 days. Wait there until the promised Holy Spirit comes. And once he did, the lives of those Christians and our lives were never the same. So we remember that day. We also seek the same help of the same comforting and encouraging spirit as we sing, Holy Spirit, Light Divine. It comes to us from Lutheran Service Book number 496, and we sing verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. Let's worship God together. Holy 
Spirit, like divine, shine upon this heart of mine. Chase the shades of night away, turn the darkness into day. Holy Spirit, how divine, cleanse this guilty heart of mine. Pity me from sin's bondage, set me free. Holy Spirit, joy divine, cheer this sad and heart of mine. Hear the sacred, subtle peace, let it grow and still increase. Spirit, holy Lord, now within this heart of mine, cast down every idol throne, reign supreme and reign The Old Testament reading for today comes to us from Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 24. Then all the congregation raised a loud cry, and the people wept that night. And all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, Would that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would that we had died in this wilderness, why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives and our little ones will become a prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, Let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the people of Israel. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, who were among those who had spied out the land, tore their clothes and said to all the congregation of the people of Israel, The land which we passed through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, he will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land that flows with milk and honey. Only do not rebel against the Lord. And do not fear the Lord of do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their protection is removed from them, and the Lord is with us. Do not fear them. Then all the congregation said to stone them with stones, but the glory of the Lord appeared at the temple of meeting to all the people of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long Will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me, in spite of all the signs that I have done among them? I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them, and I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. But Moses said to the Lord, Then the Egyptians will hear of it. For you brought up this people in your might from among them, and they will tell the inhabitants of this land. They have heard that you, O Lord, are in the midst of this people. For you, O Lord, are seen face to face, and your cloud stands over them, and you go before them in the pillar of cloud by day and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if you kill this people as one man, then the nations who have heard your fame will say, it is because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land that he swore to give to them that he has killed them in the wilderness. And now please, let the power of the Lord be great as you have promised, saying, The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, forgiving iniquity and transgression, but he will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation. Please pardon the iniquity of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love, 
just as you have forgiven this people from Egypt until now. Then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your word, but truly as I live and as all the people on earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, none of the men who have seen my glory and my signs that I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and yet have put me to the test these ten times, none of them who have obeyed my voice, none shall see the land that I swore to give to their fathers, and none of those who despise me shall see it. But my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit, and has followed me fully, I will bring into the land into which he went, and his descendants shall possess it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, beginning at verse 47. Truly I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
God's grace and peace be with you. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Today, we have made it to chapter six of the story. We hear about Israelites' wanderings. You may have heard of the poet who said that not all who wander are lost. And that's a nice sentiment for today's generation. But I want to assure you, these poor folks back then were lost. And their wandering was because they were lost, not they were lost and that's what caused them to wander. Am I getting it all a little turned around? <laughs> Maybe so. But I want you to imagine for a moment being Moses and having 300 million kids in the car all asking, are we there yet? Let the emotion of that, let, let the road trip uh, difficulties settle in for you. I can think of one road trip where I was just so struggling, so distracted by the noise that I missed a turn. And that missed turn caused us to have to go back 26 miles. 26 miles out of our way one way, 26 miles back. Whew, did that make for that trip even longer. And it ended up, I heard even more of those are we there yet moments. It, this time, this period with the Israelites, Moses struggled with them. God himself struggled with them. It was, as we have in uh, today's culture, a phrase, it was a bit like herding cats. This man right here is my great-grandfather. He's the first cat herder in our family. Herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Anybody can herd cattle. Holding together 10,000 half-wild short hairs. Oh, that's another thing altogether. Being a cat herder is probably about the toughest thing I think I've ever done. I got this one this morning, right here. And if you look at his face, it's it just ripped to shreds, you know? You see the movies, you, you hear the stories, it's... I'm living a dream. Not everyone can do what we do. I wouldn't do nothing else. It ain't an easy job, but when you bring a herd into town and you ain't lost a one of them, ain't a feeling like it in the world. But in all seriousness, what we are looking at here as we study this period of the Israelites is also an opportunity for us to look at ourselves, to look at our own moments, our own times, when we have rebelled against God, when we've questioned, when we've complained, when we've turned right instead of turning left, or when we've gone to the left, even though God said, this is the right way. Yes, this lesson, this wandering, is a cold, sobering lesson for you and me. And I pray we'll listen to it. We'll learn from it. And with God's help, we will not repeat it. So, let's take a look. Let's dig in a bit at this. And to help us do it, I want to... Uh, share a phrase with you that helps some of us directionally challenged folks, and that is the phrase GPS. Now, they're some of my favorite letters because they've made travel so much easier. It stands for Global Positioning System, Global Positioning Satellites, who are up there beaming away and helping us know our exact location, and now a little voice in our smartphones or the GPS receiver in our car tells us, in two blocks, turn left and we're all set. We make it to our destination. The children of Israel had such a system, but it was different than ours. Theirs was God's GPS, or if you'll allow me, God promising success. You see, God wanted to guide his people into a great future, this promised land flowing with milk and honey, with cities that they wouldn't even have to build, with fields that they wouldn't even have to plant, with wells they wouldn't even have to dig. All of it would be there waiting for them. And all that it took was trust that the God who had delivered them and brought 10 plagues of destruction on Egypt, who had rescued them and brought them through the Red Sea, the God who had met them in the fire and the thunder at Mount Sinai and had given to them his guidance in the word, the law, the Ten Commandments, that this God wanted to give them even more guidance 
into a promised land. And God had promised success. So the Israelites sent in some spies to see things. We, we read about it in our, our story. And maybe the little children's song can help us remember. Twelve men went to spy in Canaan. Ten were bad and two were good. Try saying that fast. <laughs> well, that is what happened. They went in and they said, as the, we read in our reading uh, this week, that we seemed like grasshoppers in our eyes and in theirs as well. These people were huge. They were well fed. They were dug in. And for a ragtag bunch of ex-slaves from Egypt, the task looked like too much. Well, that was their problem. They were looking with their own eyes, making comparisons between their, their statue and the statue of the giants and everyone else who lived in the land. They were forgetting, as we sometimes do too, that God plus us equals a majority. If God is with us, who can be against us? If God is for us, no one can stand. They forgot that. And they had complained and grumbled so many times, questioned Moses, even his own brothers and sisters. There's a lesson in that for us as well, friends. When we see a fellow sister or brother in Christ placed in a leadership role or succeeding because God has given that to him, then let's just rejoice that that person's serving God and serving all of us well, instead of the jealousy or the backbiting, the criticism that so often happens. Oh, she thinks she's really something now. Wow, I guess he figures he's too good to hang around with the likes of us. And then so much destruction comes, so much bitterness comes, as it did in the case of Miriam and Aaron, along with Moses. Let's avoid that. And let's instead cheer on those who are succeeding, those whom God has called to wear this heavy mantle of leadership, the ones that God invites to be the cat herders. Let's pray for them instead of complain against them. Let's listen to them and cheer them and encourage them and work together with them. As so many of our elders, so many of our other leaders on our council have done so much in this time when we've been apart that you may not have seen People like Marissa Pennekamp making all of these videos work, Doug providing the music, choir members coming together, singing into their phones so that we'd have recordings of people uh, singing the hymns, and on and on and on it goes. We can be a blessing to them. That was one of the last words Moses said, I put before you life and death, blessings and curses, choose life. Now, I'll say more about that at the end of the message, but can we choose to be life-giving, blessing-giving people? Can we choose, because God has chosen us, to be a blessing to others? Friends, I think we can. I believe that by God's Spirit we'll be strengthened to do so, and we can avoid that big headache and problem that the Israelites had. They complained about their hardships, they complained about the manna. How many ways can we have it? We could have it fried. We can have it sauteed. We can have it sun-baked. We can have it with sun-dry, <laughs> and on and on it goes. And yet it was food from God, the bread of life that he provided. They did nothing to get except go out and pick it up off the ground. This bread of life was God's way of providing. And they complained. They were not satisfied. Uh, you may not have been able to get all of your favorite foods at home during this quarantine time. And you may have even lost some weight because you have been eating uh, less uh, food. But have you had enough food? Have you survived? Are you okay? Yeah. We can keep on trusting that GPS, God promises success He's going to be with the Israelites going into that promised land. He's going to be with us to get us through this, whether there's one wave or two waves or however many waves there are until there's a vaccine for this thing. He's going to be with us. God promises success. GPS. But 
You know, when Miriam and Aaron complain, when the Israelites keep on complaining, when they finally listen to the uh, ten spies instead of listening to God and the two spies who tried to speak on God's behalf, when they finally choose to listen to their own fear and say, we need another leader and we need another God, let's go back to Egypt. That's when God says, enough. And GPS, where God promises success, can also mean God punishes sin. This is a harder message for us to hear, isn't it? God punishes sin. He wanted to wipe out all of Israel at that point, were it not for Moses' prayers and intercession. He just might. He wanted to wipe them out and start over again. Be done with these people, and you heard it, who have complained against me and rebelled against me these ten times. Oh. You know, I think this theme about complaining that's been a part of our readings for the last three weeks is something God has wanted to get across to us. How dangerous it is. But dangerous even more than complaining is disobeying, not trusting God. And that is the real sin of these Israelites. That is our real sin at times too, isn't it? We don't trust Him to provide, so we grab. We don't trust Him to protect, and so we fear. We don't trust Him to lift burdens, and so we carry them around, weighed down, struggling far more than we ever need to or God ever wants us to. And so these Israelites, God punished their sin of not trusting him, of not following him into the land he had promised them. It is a sobering thing to stop and think that a generation of people who had endured so much at the hands of the Egyptians, who had been slaves, who were on the very doorstep of the promised land, would not receive it. That was a part of their punishment. God punishing sin meant they were going to die in the wilderness, and their children were going to be delayed in receiving this promised land. Can you imagine being a father or mother back then, looking your child in the eye and saying, sweetheart, I know it's right there across the river, but I'm sorry to say, you're going to be my age or older before you ever get in. I'm so sorry. Can we think of times when our mistrust, when our disobedience, when our lack of faith in God has cost our children something in our lives? I know some come to my mind. And they're very sobering indeed. Oh, if we would let the pain of this lesson sink in for us, let it add to that holy fear and reverent awe that we experience and were reminded of last week. If we would let the awareness that there are consequences, if we would let that rest on us, if we would let that help us still our complaining lips, and open up our heart of trust and prayer. God, I don't see how. It doesn't feel good right now, but I believe you will be the one to get me through. That is a prayer God will answer every time. He has. Jesus came, and here's where we plug into our over story. He came to be that bread of life better than the manna. As Jesus said, they ate the manna and yet they died in the wilderness because of their lack of belief. We, as we believe in Jesus, can eat that bread of life, can believe in him, can take his grace and his life, his very life into us, and by doing so, live forever. In a promised land of heaven where there is no darkness, there is no disease, there is no death or tears or sorrow or suffering or pain. For this old order, even the ability to disobey, will have passed away. Oh, to be in that promised land, right? But until then, we have this promise. GPS, God providing salvation. The God who was punishing sin was still going to provide a path forward, for the children of the Israelites. 
The God who provided his son Jesus has provided salvation for us. And the path forward is clear. Now, I don't mean that you can see a little green arrow going forward on the ground telling you everything to do, every decision to make. But it's clear that God is with us. That if we seek him, he will guide us. God provides salvation and God promises success and God provides solutions. GPS. Oh, let it sink in. Friend, God is good. And we know not everything we go through is good. But we will go through good or difficult so much better as we trust Him, as we praise Him, as we stay close and choose His way. We choose His life, His blessings. We choose to obey because of the strength of the Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday to help us do so. We choose to obey because the weight of sin is lifted off of us by the suffering and death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and now new life helps us. We can follow our GPS, our God who provides salvation. We can trust and follow Him. We can choose life with God and all that comes with it. May we choose His life, His way, His blessings, His strength, His solutions. And may we always choose His grace and His love over all. Amen. Now, in response to today's message, I invite you to join your voice with your family with your whole church family, as we sing together a song in Christ alone. He is the uniter of our upper story. He is the one we can rely on. As Jesus said in today's gospel reading, he is the bread of life who gave his life that we may have life. And it is in Christ alone, empowered by the Holy Spirit, this Pentecost and all life long, that we will be able to live this life from now until he calls us home in glory. So join us as we sing in Christ alone. My light, my strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depth of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness Scorned by the ones he came to save Till on that cross as Jesus died The wrath of God was satisfied For every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live. There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain, then bursting forth in glorious day, a 
up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath jesus commands my destiny no power of hell no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home here in the power of christ i'll stand Please join me now as we pray to the Lord. O Holy Spirit, we ask you, who the Father has given to us, who Jesus has promised to us, we ask you, Spirit, to give of your strength to us. For we don't even always know what to pray, but as the Word of God says in Romans chapter 8, the Spirit prays for us in sighs, too deep for words. Those things in our hearts, Lord, that we cannot find the words for, those hurts, those fears, those deep needs for recovery and strength, we bring to you, and we ask you, Holy Spirit, to bring those needs before our Heavenly Father. We ask you, Spirit, to come and be our encourager, as Jesus promised, to take of what he said and make it known to us, make it real to us, make it strength and anchoring and foundational to us. Spirit, strengthen us with Jesus' promise that he is the bread of life, that he can feed us in our souls and strengthen us through that food. Spirit, move us to praise as we think of Jesus giving his body on the cross, his body as the bread of life broken for us in the sacrament we long to share again. O oh, Spirit, unite us in love with Jesus and with the Father. For if we remain in him and he remains in us, we will know the peace that Jesus wanted us to know. So Spirit, do that work in us and so much more than we can ever ask or imagine. We ask you to go, Holy Spirit, and be an encourager and a strengthener to those who are on the front lines of this health battle, this COVID-19 epidemic. Go, Spirit, and in the name of Jesus, bring a breath of encouragement to doctors and nurses, to firefighters, to those serving in grocery stores and all frontline workers who have kept working, who have kept our country and our households going. Lord, keep them going and refresh them with your wind, with your loving spirit. We ask you, O oh Lord, to also continue to bless and guide the leaders of our nation. Watch over our president and vice president. Watch over our elected leaders in Congress. We pray that you will also be with our judges, that there may be unity of action and there may be success in their actions and results that help our country come closer to normal. We pray even, Lord, with boldness that a vaccine may soon be found, that we can meet together without masks, without fear, with hope and encouragement as we share and cheer one another on through the gospel love we have. Lord, we bring to you other prayers of all those who may be sick from other illnesses and needs, and we lift up to you Fritz and others who have been hospitalized recently, praying that your healing grace will be with them. 
And we ask you, Lord, to hear all of our prayers. Again, those ones which we can't even find words for. Let your Spirit lift them to your heart. Lift the burdens from our hearts. And hear us as we pray together in the name of Jesus and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord send you his spirit, his spirit of favor, and bless you always with his peace. Amen. I invite you to join us now in a wonderful old gospel song as our closing hymn. Let's sing together, Trust and Obey. <laughs> 